Hello gamers, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a recap of the expo. Um, I didn't get a ton of footage, but I wanted to get kind of a basic feel uh, for the Portland Rancher Gaming Expo 2016. Um, now before I start getting into pickups, I just wanted to circle back. A couple of videos ago I did a video with my buddy Andy about a Sega Genesis Holy Grail. He found a cartridge, uh, one of a kind, he believed, for the Sega Genesis or the Sega Heartbeat PGA Tour 2. Now he brought this down to Portland with us. And he was on the Video Game Roadshow, which basically is like Antiques Roadshow, but just video game specific. They do it every year, I believe, at the Expo. And uh, basically you've got three, a panel of uh, this year, three experts um, from the video game industry and just collecting backgrounds. 
and they go through everything and Andy's game was definitely the highlight of that and uh, where Andy and I were kind of you know a little more conservative and you know thinking this is mostly a prototype the value you know we weren't sure maybe a few hundred maybe a few bucks who knows uh, but the the panel of experts uh, sort of validated it and collectively felt that this is probably uh, more than just a prototype and in fact um, an actual retail release while well, a crudely construction constructed one um, a retail release nonetheless probably you know sold one off through some stores or maybe mail order through the heartbeat company itself um, and they, they they strongly felt that it was in fact the rarest one of a kind only one known Sega Genesis cart um, out there which is amazing and they actually valued it at two to four thousand dollars um, obviously the crowd lit up at that point in Andy's game um, was the highlight of that Antique Roadshow. So it was really cool to see that validated. Um, and for that wonderful commenter who uh, let us know that it was junk and that Andy and I were a pair of idiots, joke's on you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, just really cool, uh, really neat. And I, you know, for anyone who's interested, just a brief follow-up. Um, now keep in mind the valuation and the price and everything, that's all dependent on a, a very set group of collectors buying something like this you'd have to get the right parties interested you'd have to get a couple people interested um, to bid back and forth against each other to get a price like that uh, but still really cool and they actually did dump the ROM for Andy um, on Saturday or Sunday and they validated that this is not the same ROM that the PGA Tour cart the traditional Genesis one would have um, so this is a unique uh, cartridge for the heartbeat it's not just a straight port uh, very very cool so now getting on to pickups uh, obviously flying down there I didn't have a ton of space to bring stuff back and at these conventions I'm always just kind of more looking for you know import things or things for systems like the Jaguar uh, that I might not be able to find out in the wild every day so that's what I'm uh, well, that's what I'm after and I found a few of those things but I also met up with a couple other youtubers um, I got to meet the game hunters finally they were there last year and I didn't get to bump into them so I met COE33 and Leaf and they were very um, very nice to talk to it was great running into them getting to meet them and they gave me this awesome Mega Man pixel art. They framed it, cool background, uh, and then they even signed it on the back. And I can tell you right now, before we get into the rest of the pickups, this is my favorite thing that I brought home uh, from the show. So thanks so much again, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. It was great running into you. And then on top of that, I also got to run into uh, DD Games. Uh, uh, you, you might have heard me mention his channel recently. And basically he had just done a 50 subscriber giveaway contest which I ended up winning and he brought me the games from that and then I also traded him uh, for a couple other games and I ended up getting this stack of games from him which was really cool. It was nice to get to meet him again also. Um, I don't think he's from the area so us both being at a convention like that is pretty much the only way we'd ever bump into each other. So very cool. Thank you Didi. Um, and then moving on from there we'll get into some Famicom games that I picked up. This was a deal I got the second day. Uh, these were all these games, this stack, and actually maybe I can get both stacks here. Yes. All right, so we got 18 games. I ended up getting these uh, for $10. Um, I'm not going to go through them each individually, but really good deal, really cool. Some of them are actual legitimate Famicom releases, and some are just Chinese knockoffs, but still kind of cool. Only a couple of them were duds and won't play. For me but not a big deal. I also picked up this massive book, Pat Contry's book, uh, The Ultimate Guide to the NES Library. Got him and Ian to sign it and I did read some of it already, uh, especially in the flight home I got into it. Very cool book, very happy to have it. Uh, it was 60 bucks and it weighs a freaking ton so it was uh, a pain lugging this around the airport but glad I got it and glad I got him to sign it. So going from there let's get into some NES pickups. Not a lot, nothing special, I'll tell you that right now, but I didn't pay more than $5 for any one of these games. I don't remember the individual prices, I just kind of bought them fed. But Cobra Command, common game but I never had it for some reason, uh, 1943 Capcom game, really good little shooter, pretty simplistic. The Stellar Dance Aerobics uses the power pad, cannot wait to do this, I'm going to work out uh, my glutes good with this one. Yep. Um, <laughs> common game here. One that it's not expensive, it's just uncommon, you don't see it very much. It's WCW World Championship Wrestling. 
Devastation Earth Star. Again, a pretty common game, but I never seem to run into it. Snoopy's Silly Sports Spectacular. Kind of a collection of mini games. Um, Pipe Dream, which I may already have. I'm gonna have to double check. I didn't think I did, but the more I look at that cover, the more I think I do. Um, Dudes with Attitude. I don't understand this game at all. I tried a couple minutes of it and I just gave up. It seems pretty bad. Maybe I just need to figure it out. And then I got Low G Man. So that was all for NES. Um, I got one single Turbo Graphics game. The Turbo Graphics prices were quite a bit higher. Um, it wasn't as much of a selection this year either. And I've really just been leaning towards getting the EverDrive for the Turbo Graphics. So I didn't really feel like dropping $40 or $50 in a single game when I knew I could get the EverDrive for like 80 But I did pick up one game that I know a fellow YouTuber has been after, and that is World Court Tennis. So I won't be keeping it, but was happy to get it. And then on to the Jaguar, as I mentioned earlier, I'm always looking for that stuff at Expos. I picked up Syndicate. 15 bucks, I believe. I think he had it at 25 and he marked it down the last day. And then Raiden. I think this is 30 bucks. Really happy to have this one. This is probably top three games, at least quality games, on the Jaguar. And I really like this game. Um, good shooter. So I'm very happy to have that. Happy to have one more game that isn't complete trash for the Jaguar. And then something I found the very first night. This was the first year that the Portland Expo was open on Friday night. And it was just for the arcade, not the uh, vendor hall. But for 20 or 25 bucks, I can't remember, I got a complete inbox Jaguar controller. Uh, my second controller I traded to Nintendo 13 a while back. He was in need of a controller and he had a game I wanted so it seemed like a good trade at the time because um, I really didn't need a second controller but when I saw this thing in the box I just had to get it to go along with my box system. Very cool to have that. Um, I did a little bit of trading with my buddy Scott who actually is from the Portland area and I ran into him last year at the expo and from him I got Dr. Mario for the Game Boy. Taz in Escape from Mars for the Genesis and then Mario Strikers for the GameCube. Most excited about this one for sure. I've been after it for a while. I just never find it at a good price. A random Famicom game. This was like two bucks. I got it just because of the box art. It looked interesting uh, with the American you know, flag pattern and Statue of Liberty. When I put it in the Retron 5 it's something um, American Trivia Challenge. Um, I don't know enough Japanese to really understand it, but I did run around the world a little bit. It seemed like a really cool game, and maybe this is one of those games that I can get a translation patch for to put into the Retron and actually play it. We'll see. I'm not sure on that. A couple more random pickups. Castlevania Adventure for the Game Boy. I already have that, but I picked that one up because I know somebody was looking for it. Uh, this is probably my strangest purchase and the worst one, but I've... I've I've seen these before and I've always liked them. It's this Game Boy cleaning kit. Uh, I'm never really going to use it. I just think they're kind of cool. And it was a couple bucks, so I picked it up. Got Soccer Kid in a random bin with a bunch of other junk for the 3DO. Uh, basically, this is Marco on the Genesis, just with a different name and better graphics. I'm, I'm curious to try that one out. Ooga Booga for the Dreamcast. I think this was five. I've been wanting it for a while. I usually see it around 15, so I never pick it up. Um, a Sunday deal here, this vendor clearance these out. Uh, this is a whole bag full of Wonderswan games. I picked up the Wonderswan last year at Portland Expo and he had these games marked for like 10 to 15 individually. Um, I got these nine games, he put them all in a bundle. He was 45 bucks. I can play three of them roughly. I don't know enough Japanese for the rest, but still very cool. Um, kind of pointless, you know, being I can't play most of them. But the price was right, so I just pulled the trigger. Uh, Andy, who I was down there with, picked up this game, but then um, traded it off to me, which was awesome. Thanks, Andy. He knows I've been looking for it, and that's Gex for the 3DO. I had a copy, and uh, it was scratched, didn't work, so I never got to play it, which is a bummer, because this is kind of one of the, you know, go-to flagship games for the 3DO, and to have it in a long box like this is awesome. And then just one last random pickup. Uh, I was walking around Sunday morning a little bit with DD Games, looking at some games, and he found this in a bin. It was a dollar. It's uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. It's just a VHS, like a promo thing that Nintendo would have sent out. It's got the original address of the person who had it. And all the you know promotional stuff is in here. Really cool. I'll probably never watch it. I just thought it was a neat piece to have in the collection. For a dollar, you know what? Why not? 
Um, so overall, what did I think of the expo? Uh, I thought it was great. You know, I went out there with my buddy Andy, and we both brought our wives this year. This is the first time either of them have been to a convention, and I think overall, um, everyone had a pretty good time. I was a little nervous about doing that. I wasn't sure how my wife was going to handle that because while she does tolerate my collecting um, and my hobby, you know, it's not her major interest. But you know, I think there was enough there to have fun for anyone, even if you're just kind of more of a casual gamer or even a non-gamer. Um, the arcade is neat and just people watching is fun. Definitely fun in Portland, uh, probably even if you're not at the expo. But there were some new additions. Like I said, the arcade was open Friday night. I thought that was a great thing to do. There were a couple vendors in there. And then there was also the addition of the History Museum this year. I will say I think that was a bit of a misfire. I go to the Midwest Gaming Classic every year just outside of Milwaukee and they've got an amazing video game history museum. All these amazing consoles from the very beginning of gaming up to current gen, rare stuff, import stuff, one of a kind stuff. Um, for the most part, the Video Game History Museum in Portland was tucked away in a corner in its own exhibit hall. It should have been over by the arcades, I feel, um, to just generate the traffic it deserved, but it was very, very focused on the Atari 2600. And while I love that console, I had it as a kid, I think that's probably, at this point in time, you know, the whole retro gaming community, I think that's probably the section or the generation that is least interesting to the majority of people. Um, so it was very one-sided. It was neat, but it needed to be fleshed out. It needed to be a true history museum, not just an Atari 2600 collection, which is what I felt like it was. Yeah, they had the Nintendo PlayStation there. I'd already seen that at Midwest Gaming Classic in April. Not that exciting to me. I got to see Metal Jesus had his um, one-of-a-kind uh, US version N64 disk drive. That was neat, but outside of that, I think that could be a much better and uh, more interesting and bigger piece to this whole expo. I hope they continue with it and they make it bigger, better, and integrate it in a way that makes more sense. Uh, but outside of that, I would say it was fun. I had a blast at um, the expo. Portland Retro Gaming Expo definitely gets a great mix of like vendors, arcade, you know, true, you know, YouTube community, like. You know, the, the backing with James Rolf being there, the bigger YouTubers, uh, Pat, Ian, um, the Normal Boots crew, all those panels are very cool um, and it's very neat to have it all in one, you know, nice, uh, well-organized area. Uh, I would say that there were probably almost too many people there this year, though, to really enjoy a lot of it at peak times. And I think that's probably just because, well, for one, retro gaming is growing more people are getting into it. And then the fact that some of the bigger speakers, especially James Rolf being there, probably drew a bigger crowd. But, you know, that's not really a knock against the expo, that's just, you know, the demand. People want to be there for that, and I had a good time. I didn't pick up a ton of games or anything amazing, as you saw, but I was happy with the pickups I did find. I got good deals on a lot of it. I really can't complain, and I had a blast hanging out with my friends. Uh, so really, what more could you ask for? But yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for listening to me ramble on about this, and uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.